All right, for this video, we want to look at how to enter the form 1099 div, which is for dividends and distributions into the TurboTax form 1040 software. So we're continuing with our example with uh, John Q taxpayer. So we've got a sample 1099 div here, which we'll go through. We've also got the uh, TurboTax online, the premium version. So this is where we're preparing John's return. And then I've got one slide here just covering some background uh, on the fact pattern itself and then the items that we're gonna see uh, within the form 1099 div. So in the first video that we did, we covered the uh, W-2, the 1099 INT, and the student loan interest for John. So we've got uh, John Taxpayer here. He's the sales agent living and working in St. Pete. And so he's got these income items from bullet point two, which have already been entered into the program. Now what we're gonna cover in this video is the 1099 div from his second brokerage account. So he has a second brokerage account, which he used to invest in publicly traded stocks, some ETFs, some RICs. And so the brokerage company sent him this consolidated 1099, uh, which shows the following items down here. So these are the items that we're gonna look at and these are the references to the forms that you would generally see these on. So we're gonna have some ordinary dividend income, a portion of it is qualified. Now, normally dividends can be reported on Schedule B, uh, but if your Schedule B income is under $1,500, you don't have to include it. And so TurboTax by default is gonna look at our overall interest in dividend income. And if it's under that threshold, it's not gonna include a Schedule B for us. It'll just report everything directly on page one. A similar issue with the capital gain distribution. So capital gain distributions are treated as long-term capital gains. So they're generally reported on Schedule D. However, if you don't have any other uh, gains or losses from the sale of capital assets or any carryovers, you don't have to include Schedule D. You could just report the $12 directly on page one. Non-dividend distributions are non-taxable. So this is cash you receive that's not a dividend distribution uh, from earnings and profits, it's a return of principal. So because it's a return of principal, it's not taxable to you, but it is a reduction to your cost basis in the stock. Now the 1099 is also gonna show we have some foreign taxes withheld. Now, foreign taxes that are withheld can generally be treated as a foreign tax credit, and so they're reported on Form 1116. However, there is a de minimis exception, right, which says that you don't have to include the 1116. You can just take the tax credit directly. If the foreign tax is not more than $300, the tax is assessed on passive income, and so that includes portfolio income like interest and dividends and the foreign taxes and the foreign income are reported on a qualified payee statement, such as a 1099, a Schedule K-1, or, or a Schedule K-3. And then lastly, we have, because this is a consolidated 1099, we do have some interest income uh, from the broker. So let's have a look at the brokerage statement and then start entering this stuff into TurboTax. So if we go to TurboTax here, we're working within the income uh, an expenses section so we can drill down on this. All right, so if we go into the federal section, wages and income, and so we'll see what we have entered already is the W-2 for the employer and we have our 1099 INT from the other account. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our investments and savings section and we're gonna add a 1099 div. So if we pull this up, you can see the existing one from the first video. So we'll go ahead and add a second one because we have a second account here. And so it does give you the option to input this, or sorry, to download this directly from your broker. So you can log in, download the information directly. However, because this is not a real account, we're gonna have to just go ahead and input everything manually, which you can certainly do as well. So we've got a 1099 div, go ahead and continue, and we are gonna type it in ourselves. All right, so the, payee, uh, the payer here, 
is going to be not real company LLC. So they're the company that we have the account with. Real company LLC. And the first three fields that are populated are the most common ones, right? These are the ordinary dividends, the qualified dividend income, and then the capital gain distributions. So in our case here, if we go to the 1099 div, we can see the total ordinary of 223, the qualified portion of 195, and the capital gain distributions of 12. So we'll go ahead back here, we'll do the 223 in ordinary dividends. We have 195 in qualified, and then we have $12 in capital gain distributions. Now, you can see here that I'm not entering the cents, right? So I'm not putting in 195, 26. And that's because under the, um, under the uh, rules for the reporting here, you are you're kind of required to just round to the nearest whole dollar, right? The IRS doesn't want to see the cents. So if you're in the habit of doing a lot of these like I am, you just round it automatically. Uh, as you're typing it in, but the software would do it for you also. Uh, okay, so we've got those three items entered, but now we need to enter some additional information uh, because we have other fields in other boxes, right? So if we look at our 1099 div here, we have that non-dividend distribution on line three, and we have box seven, foreign taxes paid of $2. So if we go back to the return, we have the non-dividend distribution to box three of $10, and we have our foreign taxes paid of two. So we've got those two items entered there. No other fields are required here, so we can go ahead and continue on through, right? We don't have any state taxes or other state source information. And it's asking us here, do any of these uncommon situations apply? Uh, in our case, no, right? We don't have any US government interest. There's no ESOP uh, distributions. And the qualified dividend income we have, it's being reported as such by the broker. They track our holding period for us so we can uh, trust that that's the correct tax treatment. So we'll go ahead and continue on through. And so now the 1099 div is in there, right? So now uh, we've got the 1099 div. So now the last thing to do is enter the 1099 INT. So we're gonna add another one same process as before, only this time we're doing 1099 INT for interest. Go ahead and continue. And same thing, we're gonna type it in ourselves here. So we got not real company LLC. And the amount of interest income we've got is $3, right? And we'll see, do a check here, no other fields are required. So we just have the $3 in box one, and we can go ahead and continue on through. All right, do we have any of these uncommon situations, right? We don't have to adjust any interests. Uh, we're not resident of any of these states, so none of these are gonna reply. All right, so now we've got both of those entered for not real company LLC. We got our dividend income, our interest income, so everything looks pretty good here. So now let's have a look at the print preview of the return and see how everything kind of flowed through to the forms. So we'll go ahead and preview the return. We're doing 2023 federal return, just the return. Okay, so let's have a look at what was updated. Well, the last video, what we had entered was the W-2 wages, so that's fine. Uh, we also had the student loan interest deduction from Schedule 1, that's reported on there on line 10. You can see the $2,500 student loan deduction. Uh, we had the tax exempt interest that's, that was reported on video one. So now the updates are we've increased the taxable interest amount by that $3 that we recorded. And we have the ordinary dividend amount and the qualified dividend amount. So 223 and 195. And then the long-term capital gains of 12 reported on line seven. Now notice here on line seven, it does prompt us attach a schedule D if required. If not, go ahead and check here. So TurboTax, based on what we've entered, knows that, well, we don't need the Schedule D because we only have long-term capital gain distributions. So we've checked that box, or they've checked that automatically for us, and we just have the 12. 
a uh, similar problem with, or not problem, but but same issue with Schedule B, right? So Schedule B is not required in this context because uh, we don't have income uh, on Schedule B uh, over that $1,500 threshold. So if we scroll through here, you're gonna see that we don't have a Schedule D or a uh, Schedule B for the interest. But what we do have uh, is Schedule 3 for the foreign tax credit. So that $2 in foreign tax credit, you can see that's being reported here. And again, the 1116 isn't being included because it's not required. Now, of course, you can always attach the 1116 if you want, uh, but in this case, we didn't have to. So that $2 credit is ultimately reported here on line 20. So we get a $2 credit, all right, a reduction in our federal tax of 4517. So uh, the net amount of tax that John owes as of now is $4,515. That's his tax liability uh, and before accounting for things like his federal withholding. All right, so that covers it for this video. I hope that was helpful. Any questions, obviously, feel free to leave a comment below. And I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thank you.